In this video, I'll show you how to use the Excel library found within the NetAdvantage Silverlight data visualization tools. Now, what I'm doing is I'm working with the XAM web grid just so I have a control to work with. But when we start working with the Excel library classes, everything you see there will be available within the data visualization tools. So the way this works is we have a grid and I'll simply import some of the data from this Excel sheet. And you can see then it just filled up all the rows and columns with the data that's in the sheet. And then I can also export out what we're, what's found in the grid out to an Excel sheet. Now I've been testing this, so there's my data and we'll override it. So now let's take a look at it in Excel. So there's the file. And if we open that up, you can see that there's all the data that was in the grid now available within the Excel sheet. So let's go now to Visual Studio and I can show you how this is accomplished. So as far as the UI is concerned, there's two major parts to it. We have the grid and then the buttons that allow you to do the import and export. So the grid's just set up in a pretty basic fashion and then we have the two buttons here that uh, do the commands for us. So let's go into the code behind and you can see how it interacts with those. So let's take a look at the import first. The first thing we'll do is open up an open file dialog and we'll do the filtering for Excel files and then we'll show the dialog and so we're searching for uh, an Excel sheet that has data in it at this point. So if we've got one and it has the extension of XLS, then we can create a new workbook and then open that file as a stream and load that workbook up with the data that comes from the stream. So just to make sure that we still have a, an instance of the workbook that's not null, and also we want to make sure that we have uh, worksheets that we can find at index of zero. So we're looking at greater than or equal to one. Then we can go and pull a worksheet out of the workbook and begin working with that. So all the data exists in the worksheet and then all we simply have to do is loop through all the rows within the worksheet and create an observable collection of product which models the data in the, in the worksheet in order to build up the observable collection and then set that equal to the item source of the grid. Now the only, only other nuance here that you need to be aware of is that I'm using some methods here, get value string, get value bool, and get value integer, and I implemented these as extension methods. And I did that just to clean up the code a little bit. So you can see here we've got the worksheet Excel extensions, and that's found in the namespace infragistics.documents.excel. And get value string is just taking the value and doing a two string, and then the boolean and the integer versions of that method are just doing the try parse in order to make sure the incoming values can be converted into those types before we try and do it. So it's just doing some safety checking and keeping that code out of the UI. So that's all there is for doing an import. Silverlight will take care of the rest of the work in order to display the, the data within the grid when we set the item source. Now when we do the export, there's a few things that we need to do. Think of the grid, the first thing that we want to do is pull off the headers so that we can make our Excel sheet have its first row with the, the column names or the headers. And then we need to get all the data from the grid and then write both the headers and the data into the worksheet. So I've added a couple other extension methods here to make life a little bit easier within the code behind here. So in order to get the text for the headers of the column names within the grid, I implemented this get header text extension method. So if we take a look at here, you can see that's the XAM grid extensions. And I think because I'm using some early versions of the assemblies, not the release version, for some reason IntelliSense isn't picking up the visibility in the header text, but to be sure, it does compile. Um, so it's just an IntelliSense thing. It goes away after you, you compile it. So that's why you're seeing those squigglies. But as far as the, the procedural code is, is concerned, all I'm doing is taking a look at the grid columns and if, the, if, if I want only visible columns to be added into the list, then I'll take a look at the visibility and just get the header text out of each one of them and return that as a list of string. So then we go back and we have the, the header or the column names and then we need the data. Get data is an extension method found in the same place and you can see this here that uh, we're taking a look at each one of the rows within the grid rows and then looping through them. Again, if we only want visible data, then we're only taking the cell value if the visibility is visible. Again, same issue here with the squiggly. So once we have each one of those, then uh, we add it to the array. Now, this is a, a two-dimensional array that's happening here because obviously if you think of a, an Excel worksheet, 
uh, well, it's a two-dimensional type of thing. You have rows and columns. So I have a data item here, and all the data item is doing is wrapping up an object list. I chose to use this type of a syntax because when we start to do this loop in here, it's a little bit easier than having to have nested generic lists. So it's easier just to have an, a data item here that we can add to. Totally your preference. But we'll go through each one of the rows, and then each one of the rows will go through each one of the cells, add the cell value as a value in the item, and then finally add the item to the list of data items which I've instantiated here as data. So that'll return all the visible data from the grid. So now we have the headers, we have the data, and then we need a workbook. I created a workbook factory here because often you'll need to create a workbook and you might want to have some standard settings set up. And so I chose to do it this way. I, I'm creating a workbook and the first worksheet will be named product data. The default width of the columns will be set to 5,000 and I'm telling this also with this uh, optional parameter, or with this Boolean parameter here. Then I want to freeze the top row. So if we take a look at this method here, we're creating the workbook, adding the sheet based off of the sheet name, freezing the top row of panes by enabling it as frozen and then showing the, uh, the first row is frozen and then the column width is what we're passing in here. So you might have a, a number of different ways that you want to create this, but if you have some standard settings and you want to create a factory method to, to build those up, that might be one way you want to go about it. So once we have the workbook, then I can take a look at the worksheet that we created and then fill that in with the headers and then also the data. And again, this is an extension method, just trying to keep the code out of the UI as much as possible. And the, this is a, a very simple procedure. Now what's nice about the, the worksheets is that once they're created, you have all the rows, rows and columns available. It's not like you have to loop through and start creating those rows and columns or those cells individually. They're already there, so then, so then you can simply access them by their indices. So in order to write out the headers, we'll go through all of the headers and take the first row and write the, the cell value equal to the cell index based off of our loop here of what the header value is. So that takes the first row and loops through all the columns and adds the header values in. Then the next thing we'll do is take our data and loop through each item. And so as we're going through each item, this is basically a row. And then as I have that row, then we'll go across and add the values in for each column. And that's what we're doing here. So for each value in item, then we'll look at the row index and then the cell index which is being incremented in this loop and just add the value into the value, pretty easy. The only other thing you need to be aware of is that you want to start off row index at one because we're setting the headers ahead of time in, in the row index of zero. So we need to start at index of one in order to make sure that we don't overwrite anything in there. So once we fill the worksheet with the data and the headers, then we can open up a save file dialog. Again, we'll filter it for Excel and give the default extension of XLS. And then we'll, we'll show the dialog to the user and allow them to save it and close it. Infragistics. On the web at infragistics.com.